Hello, Namaskar, my dear friends. I am Prashant Mahwani and I warmly welcome all of you to Study IQ. Today, we are going to analyze this Trafficking of Persons Bill 2017. We will start with some facts and figures and background information about this trafficking and then we will head towards this bill and we'll go through and analyze that what this bill has in it. And uh, of course, we will end this discussion with some recommendations. We'll try to fill that vacuum that we find in this trafficking this the most latest or you can say the current bill uh, that is at present with group of ministers so let's uh, crack on but before that i have two important things uh, to share with you first thing is that this is my facebook page you will be able to download this pdf uh, from my facebook page you can follow me and you can get in touch with me as well with the help of this facebook page and uh, pen drive and tablet courses that we provide for various different exams are available if you want to know more about it just check out studyiq.com now let me start this discussion with a very basic or you can say very easy to understand a simple definition that what is human trafficking the trade of human beings for exploitative purpose is basically human trafficking and you have three major you can say forms of exploitation you have this economical exploitation under which you can take this uh, bonded and forced labor many a times we find that uh, uh, poor people they borrow money from someone and uh, if they are not able to pay back that money then they have to work in for for that rich person or for that money lender they have to work uh, in his or her field and um, all you get is a little bit of food that's it and many a times uh, you have to work forever even generations and generations right they will work for uh, that particular family or that person so you have this sort of things uh, it may sound a bit strange and retro but uh, this is a dark reality of our society uh, you find this sort of things as well bonded labor and forced labor in our society uh, this is of course part of uh, economical as well as uh, physical exploitation and then you have this uh, sexual exploitation as well this is the third form and uh, with uh, sexual exploitation i would like to throw a little bit of light on this thing uh, there is a subtle you can say uh, or you can say there is a difference of shade right you have uh, a dark red and a bit light red in the same way you have this sexual exploitation which of course includes this physical exploitation but the psychological scars uh, that uh, are left behind or uh, you know this uh, this victims they go through this trauma of this ex sexual exploitation it is nearly impossible to wash off this scars so this is uh, a more severe form of of course uh, sexual exploitation is a bit more severe form of i may say uh, physical exploitation which includes this sexual exploitation of course includes this psychological and moral and of course spiritual thing as well it basically ruins the soul of the victim so we find this many a times uh, there are some parents who who sell their kids right male and female both in the market either for bonded labor either for sexual sexual exploitation and things like that uh, illegal you can say organ trade is rampant uh, not only in our country but around the world as well it is rampant in our country no doubt uh, you know this thing too very well you all are mature adult students you have uh, finished your bachelors most of you so you are aware about this thing as well that uh, as small girls and you find women and adolescent girls are sold in the market for this pornographic films and sexual exploitations and other things so you find these things right all these things are part of this human trafficking and you have this domestic help in house load many many a times you find small kids are working there in big houses paid nothing you can say or just peanuts uh, two time food and that food as well is leftover food inhuman treatment and things are done in those big bungalows where there is no shortage of food and money so it's not just those parents who are selling their kids right uh, it is those buyers as well who are who are ready to pay money uh, for purchasing slaves so this is the thing and i'm sure you have uh, seen this thing in india we find people begging and kids begging <laughs> Um, at traffic lights and nowadays in toll plazas as well and a country like India right uh, we find in many other developing countries as well 
uh, one of the most uh, you can say a theory that is working behind the most fundamental thing that is working behind this thing this human trafficking is demand and supply right uh, there is a supply and there is a demand out there in the market and a country like india you know we have this huge population and this population this huge population you find people are illiterate um, few i'm not saying everyone right uh, we find this illiterate people we find illiteracy is accompanied by lack of education lack of awareness and then you can also add lack of morality and ethics and other things and then they are ready to supply their kids or they are they are trading with someone else kid right they are kidnapping and transporting them to this place to that place and things like that so there is a supply and there is a demand and this is the thing that is working the main core business you can say thing that is working behind it or economical thing that is working behind this human trafficking but the biggest issue that we have in our country is this lack of knowledge as well as lack of awareness about it when you go out to eat something this tea stalls and this street food when we go out you find small kids are washing plates and serving food and you find in garages and other places commercial centers they they are this delivery boy for uh, for for this tea and things like that we normally we take it as uh, this is a sort of form of poverty but we hardly associate this thing with this human trafficking thing this people this victims of human trafficking right uh, they are living within means they are living in our society right they are living amongst us and uh, we find them we see them on day to day basis but we hardly see them uh, through this lens of uh, human trafficking we see it mostly uh, with this lens of poverty and lack of education and high population and things like that and one more thing that i would like to add here is that uh, this human trafficking is one of the largest organized crime in the world the number one is drugs but at number 2 and number 3 many a times you find arms or you find uh, human trafficking as number 2 so these two positions right they are interchanging one this one is a fixed one and if you go through this figures of international labor organization then you find that 11.7 million people are working as forced labor or you can say term them modern day slaves in just asia pacific region around the world 246 million kids small children ranging between 5 to 7 are exploited every year you can see that 246 uh, a big part not every year this is a total 246 right uh, 5 to 7 um, kids ranging from children ranging between this age and you have this uh, every year uh, 7 lakh to 40 lakh people are trafficked every year so this is a big business you find this cartels running this business and uh, of course as i told you there is a demand and supply thing there are many countries in the world where you find population is quite high like our country and there are many countries other countries in developed countries as well you find there are many families who are ready to recruit uh, this uh, or they are ready to purchase this they are ready to do this one off deal in which they can buy a couple of boys and girls and uh, then they can be deployed for cleaning their bungalows and cars and other things and there are many many countries as well i don't want to give name of any country here but i know there are many countries right uh, they are developed countries they are rich countries uh, at global level you feel that these are the best countries but the dark realities are this there over there there are many people who buy it and i'm sure you have seen this films uh, Uh, there are many good films uh, slum dog is there like uh, slum dog millionaire and then we have a very beautiful film of rani mukherjee uh, this uh, mardani is a good one uh, john abraham's rocky handsome and uh, a south indian film uh, satya dev ips is a very good film as well in which you find this human trafficking is uh, it means th- there is a touch of human trafficking in that one they have tried to project this dark reality of human trafficking and the things that are going on in our society of course now if we go through the facts and figures provided by our ministry and government agencies then we find that almost 20000 women and children were victims of human trafficking in india back in 2016 this is rise if you compare this 20000 women and children then you find that uh, this there is a rise of 25% when we compare it with 2015 many police officers right uh, they believe and they they are saying this thing and this is a fact as well that awareness when we compare it uh, if we turn back the pages of history then we find that awareness has increased no doubt and uh, 
many people are coming out victims are coming out they are taking a stand and they are reporting this thing uh, with police and other uh, agencies and departments and uh, because of this thing as well there is a rise in this number uh, but one thing that uh, this police officers or, and officials uh, they also agree with this thing that uh, these figures that we have with us uh, they are not actual figures right it is just a tip of iceberg uh, many things are still working under this dark sports uh, this uh, this uh, sports or you can say this uh, this uh, the, this whole business this cartel thing is working uh, behind this shadow thing so it is hard to find them and victims and it is also it, it also touches this dark reality of our society too I'm, I'm sure so far what we have discussed and the things that we have discussed you can see a touch of our culture and society as well that have unaware or have indifferent we are with this particular issue 2016 national crime bureau uh, records bureau says that almost when when it comes to trafficking right uh, the numbers are almost equal when it comes to women and children so this is the thing and we have some hot spots as well in our country predominantly eastern side northeastern side to be more precise uh, those areas uh, sharing border with bangladesh I beg your pardon Bangladesh and Nepal and uh, you have uh, this these two areas are of course the largest one in terms of Indian security scenario biggest threat that we have and West Bengal is the biggest or you can say the main hub for this thing uh, for trafficking and uh, you have these other states as well Uttarakhand, Assam, Meghalaya and it's not limited to this uh, cities only right uh, you go to Mumbai you go to the most remote part of our country as you know now that uh, trafficking is not just about girls or about kids or about women it includes this uh, bonded labors and other things as well so I can safely say that uh, if you travel from east to west or north to south in our country you find at least you will find at least one person as per United Nations definition or as per the latest definition or as per this understanding of modern slavery you will find at least one person who is suffering this slavery thing Apart from that, uh, when we compare this illegal immigration and human trafficking, you always find that the human trafficking overlaps I illegal immigration and particularly women, right? They are forced to cross the borders because, of course, we know that they are forced to work in these brothels and to sell their body for pleasure of someone else. And uh, then they are forced to work in pornographic films and things like that. If we go through an uh, international figures, then we find that uh, out of 100 cases say for example if you have 100 cases then out of that 80 cases are for this sexual exploitation when I say cases I'm talking about of course this uh, human trafficking bonded labor includes 20 percent and India is considered as a hub of this crime in Asia because every eight minutes right a child goes missing in our country I have other facts and figures but here I would like to throw some light on uh, this topics or these things that we hardly uh, discuss or the things that we never glance at right uh, see whenever there is any conflict going on in in our country between 1992 to 1997 right uh, cookies and naga tribe uh, they were having conflict in this northeastern region and because of that many kids uh, became they became homeless and at present they means since then they were picked up by these people and they are trafficked at present they are working in different parts of the world we don't know where they are so whenever you have this sort of conflicts uh, going on in any part of the world we have this conflicts going on in Syria and uh, Mihan, Myanmar's this uh, Rohingya issue is there and in our country as well so uh, this is the thing uh, it becomes a sort of uh, a, a big market for these cartels uh, to, to abduct and uh, to purchase and you know to transport and traffic this kids and women and other people so human trafficking no doubt so far what we have discussed you can safely say that this is one of the major problems of our country we have some laws as well right uh, we have some laws we have this uh, immoral trafficking prevention act itpa uh, it uh, focuses on this thing sexual exploitation and uh, you have this uh, punishment of seven years to life imprisonment but you have some flaws with this thing and it uh, this it is focused on men only when it comes to women when I say man I mean to say if someone is engaged with this business and if that person is a man then that person will be dealt 
uh, will be dealt under this ITPA, but a woman can easily escape. So you know it very well that nowadays we have uh, many women uh, who are in fact uh, doing all those sort of things that are against uh, the woman itself. And uh, then you have this Bonded Labor Abolition Act, Child Labor Act, Juvenile Justice Act, and they focus predominantly on this uh, bonded and forced labor. Uh, since uh, or post this Nirbhaya rape case, uh, we amended our uh, criminal law too, and uh, this trafficking uh, was uh, taken under this new criminal law, but uh, still we find there are huge gaps. And uh, the biggest one is we have uh, many times multiple laws I beg your pardon for my throat here. Uh, we have this multiple laws many times. Uh, they uh, this multiple laws they work against each other. This becomes a sort of a weakness uh, for agencies and uh, these uh, cartels. They are aware about this weakness of uh, government, and uh, this works as a sort of window for them to escape. Then we have this interstate cooperation. When it comes to interstate cooperation. It is very bad. Uh, ego clashes uh, is one of the biggest issue that we find and uh, this is the reason why we need a new bill, a new law and uh, this is where it comes this uh, trafficking of persons prevention, protection and rehabilitation bill 2017 initiated by Sri Menka Gandhi who is uh, our union, union minister for uh, women and child development. And uh, the status at present, the status of this bill is that it is uh, been looked after by a group of ministers. So basically, they are experts are going through this bill. They are discussing it, and uh, the main thing or the main job of this GOM is to come out with a more refined and more realistic and more, you can say, advanced version of this bill that was tabled by Sri Menka Gandhi. Now this bill talks about this punishments and now we are going through important bits and pieces of this bill. Punishment, you have minimum 10 year punishment for uh, those engaging in this aggravated form, forms of trafficking. Life imprisonment for repeat, uh, repeat offenders. Yes, so punishment we were talking about uh, life imprisonment for uh, repeat offenders and uh, fine not less than uh, do lack and when I say repeat offenders uh, or life imprisonment uh, we are talking about that uh, they will never come out of uh, uh, they will never come out of these jails and aggravated forms of trafficking very quickly let me throw some more light this bill speaks about this thing as well and under this you can include this forced labor or bonded labor by using violence intimidation promise of payment of money and deception and coercion then we find this sort of things as well taking place in our society that uh, many times uh, narcotic drugs and other alcohol and other banned substances are given to the person and then the pornographic films are recorded and uh, then this uh, this person or victim is being sold to different countries and things like that so all these things uh, will become part of this aggravated forms of trafficking and this aggravated form also includes trafficking for the purpose of begging for forcing those who are mentally ill or are pregnant. So you can say in this way this bill has covered many important uh, aspects of uh, reality and then you have uh, you know, this bill is talking about this National Anti-Trafficking Bureau and one of the main job of this uh, National Anti-Trafficking Bureau will be to, to coordinate or create a sort of uh, coordination or build bridges between different agencies and monitor things going on uh, on this trafficking thing and uh, doing surveillance and uh, of course uh, the main aim is to prevent this uh, trafficking of persons and one of the most interesting thing that I find here because we have talked about this porous border and international trafficking so this National Anti-Trafficking Bureau uh, will create bridges or connection with uh, international or foreign countries as well and uh, international agencies as well as uh, agencies and departments of foreign countries and then they will liaise with each other and uh, together we can work in a sort of uh, sync uh, so that we can prepare laws and uh, procedures so that uh, a delivery system justice delivery system becomes a bit more eff effective and efficient uh, this bill covers this buying and selling so 
as I told you, very important thing. See, demand and supply. If there is a demand of, say, for example, drugs, then supply will find its own way. If there is demand of prostitution, then uh, there are many people who will start supplying this thing. So, it is important to cover this demand too. So, any person, now you cannot say that uh, uh, you were not aware, aware about this thing because you have said that you have paid money of this and that so you, there there won't be any excuse on the buyer side as well uh, with the help of this bill and you will get uh, seven years uh, minimum seven years and it can go up to 10 years too and fine uh, can go upward of rupees one lakh trafficking with the with the help of media very interesting including print and internet or digital or electronic things so here basically you know sexual assault of uh, sexual ass assaulting someone and then filming it or taking pictures and many a times rapes are recorded and things like that and then this material is used for extortion and for forcing that particular person or his or her family member to do all this sort of things so when i say all those this it means forcing them to work in brothel and making basically someone or forcing them to work as sexual worker so all these sort of things are covered as well so it's a good thing and uh, the sad thing is that uh, today there is a rise of this child pornography too there are many pedophiles out there and this is i believe one of the worst uh, thing uh, that can ever happen to someone this child pornography thing and uh, because of this thing there is a demand of this thing and uh, there are many small kids girls and boys are abducted and are forced uh, to to take part in this sort of pornographic films uh, this apart from this national level this bill is also talking about the state level anti trafficking officers and there will be police officers uh, right uh, dedicated or you can say district level anti trafficking uh, unit will be there as well so you have central level you have state level and then you have district level too so in this way this three tier will be covered uh, three tier will be covered and all this uh, rural uh, grassroots level uh, you can say officers uh, then they will work under this uh, district level officers uh, so uh, this is how it is going to work you this bill is also talking about this relief and rehabilitation and it is talking about this committee as well there will be a committee this committee will be headed by uh, secretary of uh, women and child development and uh, you will have members from ministry of uh, home external affairs labor employment social justice empowerment uh, social justice and empowerment panchayati raj health and family welfare and once you have all these members uh, what happens is basically we have this whole we are talking about a committee uh, and we are talking about uh, you can say government uh, at all levels right we will work in or they will work this committee and this new bureau will work in sync with each other so uh, things can become a bit more fast and uh, the burden of proof will uh, lie on this trafficker so rather than victim uh, proving whether crime has been committed on him or her it will be the trafficker who will have to prove that uh, that uh, that person has or the trafficker has not done something wrong uh, it has a a clause of stripping this uh, traffickers or institution or any any organization associated with this thing this assets uh, can be taken over by the government uh, it is talking about anti-human trafficking wing as well uh, to be set up and this wing will be working under the central investigation agency like nia so expertise of nia uh, will be heredited by this uh, new anti-human trafficking wing uh, district level thing as I already told you we will have a uh, designated session courts as well for speedy trials and things like that so uh, this way this bill is covering many important bits and pieces but uh, there are some uh, flaws as well like say for example when it comes to this new institutions uh, this bill is not clear about the role of this institution the second thing is that too much of uh, surveillance is again not good uh, there is no you can say uh, clarification on accountability mechanism so let's hope that this GOM that is going through this bill it will come out with it will go through this items as well and will sort it out the other thing is state governments uh, need to 
uh, create a rehabilitation fund so money will be provided by the state governments and this money financial resources will be used for this protection homes where you find these kids and girls and rescued victims will be kept here and they will be provided with this legal assistance and one of the most important thing that I find here is skill development programs right uh, you don't want them to rely on you forever you want them to stand their own at their own feet and you want to add wings to them so that they can fly they can take a flight so uh, by adding skills or by inculcating skills and by if possible then educating them and building that confidence and one of the most important thing is psychological support because when you uh, you uh, relaunch them back in society you want them to stand tall you want them to be a very confident person of course uh, it, it is going to be challenging but you have to train them and support them for this thing and uh, this bill is talking about generating awareness and this is one of the most important you can say preventive measure proactive measure that we can take we have to create awareness in all those areas which are considered as a hot spot of this thing but at the same time we have to create awareness in this uh, people uh, amongst our society as well all those people who are purchasing and are uh, renting or if they are providing any job to this sort of people then we should create awareness uh, regarding this thing too now uh, other recommendations now recommendations that i have for you is uh, basically uh, a robust implementation of existing labor law is a must thing this is implementation is the thing in which most of the time we are lacking we need proper labor, ins uh, labor inspection including informal economy uh, we need this uh, distress migration to end this caste based discrimination as well works as a push factor for this uh, trafficking then you have this uh, we have to properly enforce our rural employment guarantee legislation so no one has to leave their home and go out and work somewhere else if they can find a job in their own town in their own village then they will be safe within uh, within the people who are familiar uh, to them and once we do all these things uh, we would be able to achieve the sustainable development goals uh, number 8.7 uh, as per this 8.7 SDG uh, eradicating forced labor ending modern slavery and human trafficking and ending ending child labor is uh, we should get rid of it by 2025 so we should start and this bill can help uh, we need to book all those officials uh, who are not taking action if they are if they are engaged in corruption and bribing and if they are taking money and if they are not paying attention to or if they are not executing their duties then they should be booked as well we have to ensure this anti human trafficking units are there in all our districts and we have to clearly come out with this SOPs standard operating procedures step number one step number two step number three everything should be clear so we don't have any sort of confusion we need to get rid of this jurisdictional culture or issue that it does not this crime has not taken place into my jurisdiction so I cannot do anything this sort of attitude should go and uh, training and sensitizing our agencies and all those officials and people associated with this thing right uh, we can take on board the stakeholders and they can demonstrate and best practices can be shared and all these things can be done and one of the most and last but not the least confidentiality and privacy when you relaunch these people back in society we don't want this second inning to begin right we don't want people to point fingers at them and say that this person is a victim of sexual exploitation and things like that no we don't need that so confidentiality and privacy is something that should be preserved and that's everything that I have got to share with you guys I have one more thing to share and this is helpline number just in case if you think uh, something is going wrong then uh, these are the numbers here I hope uh, I, I seriously hope uh, that this thing ends that you may uh, never be in a position to use this number for someone else right uh, but just in case if you have to use then here here you go and I have a question as well for you uh, they say the people who are associated with this business right they say that it is a low risk high profit business so my question is as a society what are the things that you and I can do to stop this menace with this dear friends I end this discussion thank you very much for listening to this video and uh, please don't forget to subscribe 
hit the notification bell please give us your like if you have learned something out of this discussion pass your valuable comments i would be eagerly waiting for your answer may your god be with you goodbye enjoy hind